NVIDIA just changed the AI market again, and it's pretty crazy how this stock continues to move forward in this AI market. This is a $4.4 trillion company that was up nearly 4% today. And on today's episode, I want to take a closer look at, obviously, the big news and companies that are directly and indirectly impacted by this. So let's get started. I want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video and check out fool.com slash Jose for the 10 best stocks to buy now. With that link, you get a promotional offer for the subscription service. Now, let's continue with today's episode. All right. So first, let's just start off with the major, major announcement. So OpenAI and NVIDIA announced a strategic partnership to deploy 10 gigawatts of NVIDIA systems. Now, if we look at this strategic partnerships, it enables OpenAI to build and deploy at least 10 gigawatts of AI data centers with NVIDIA systems representing millions of GPUs for OpenAI's next generation AI infrastructure. To support the partnership, NVIDIA intends to invest up to a hundred $100 billion in OpenAI progressively as each gigawatt is deployed. The first gigawatt of NVIDIA system will be deployed in the second half of 2026 on the NVIDIA Vera Rubin platform. So a lot to take in there, right? But 10 gigawatts, $100 billion, millions of GPUs from, uh, from NVIDIA to OpenAI, and the first system expected to be deployed in the second half of 2026. This has caused a lot of excitement for NVIDIA. As we can see, the stock is up about 4% as we are recording today's episode, $183.58. And if you know me, I'm obviously super excited because I'm extremely bullish for the AI market. Now, I am going to discuss a little bit more and maybe some of the bearish takes that I'm hearing, but at least 10 gigawatts. We've heard in the past from Jensen. Jensen has mentioned that about one gigawatt of data center in total cost about 50 to $60 billion, plus or minus a few billion there. In theory, within that 50 to $60 billion, about 30 to 35 to $40 billion is going to be NVIDIA hardware solutions. So this $100 billion is going to help them build these massive gigawatts of data centers. And I'll talk a little bit more about the, about the math in a bit. But gigawatts of data centers for 10 gigawatts, it could be hundreds and hundreds of billions of dollars. Some other things that we noted from here is the $100 billion is going to be invested progressively. So Jensen is saying, I'm not going to give you all my money at once. We're going to give it in increments. I'm guessing 10 gigawatts for each gigawatt, you're going to get about uh, $10 billion, right? So every time you give a first gigawatt, we're going to give you 10 billions of dollars. And you might be wondering, Jose, those 10 billions of dollars is not going to be enough to cover a gigawatt data center build out. And that it is true. But remember, OpenAI does not build its own AI infrastructure. It rents it out, right? And this is the money that it's going to give for that leasing. Remember, if you ever lease anything, you kind of pay it or you rent out anything, you kind of pay it over time. So in theory here, for example, let's say Oracle. Oracle, let's say, was going to build a huge AI infrastructure. Oracle was going to put a lot of CapEx coming in. OpenAI on a yearly basis, on a monthly basis, on a consumption basis, we'll be paying for that in one way or another. So this is to kind of go with that intent, right? It's not like you need all that money as, at all. Now, OpenAI will work with NVIDIA as a preferred strategic compute and networking partner for its AI factory growth plans. OpenAI and NVIDIA will work to together to co-optimize their roadmaps for OpenAI's model and infrastructure software and NVIDIA's hardware and software solution. So a few things here. If you are an AMD investor, maybe, maybe you might be a little bit scared, right? Because NVIDIA, what did they say? We're working here, not as an exclusive partner, but a preferred partner, right? So there's no exclusivity here. So it's not a true bearish mode. But NVIDIA will be working with OpenAI to not customize their hardware, but make sure they're optimized for open AI solutions. Very similar to what AMD's 450 series is kind of doing with open AI as well. So it's kind of creating even more of a friction between AMD and, a and Nvidia and open AI here. So right there, not exclusive, but preferred partnership. Now this partnership complements the deep work open AI and Nvidia are already doing with a broad networks of collaborators, including Microsoft, Oracle, SoftBank, 
and Starkey partners focusing on building the world's most advanced AI infrastructure. They're also going to talk a little bit about OpenAI has grown to over 700 million weekly active users right now. And NVIDIA and OpenAI look forward to finalizing the details of this new phase of strategic partnership in the coming weeks. So we're going to definitely cover it in this channel. This is the best place you're going to get any AI and semiconductor news. Now, how is NVIDIA going to fund this, right? $100 billion, that's a lot. First, let's just look at NVIDIA's free cash flow in the last 12 months. In the last 12 months, it's sitting at about $72 billion. If every gigawatt is about 10, this company's free cash flow is enough to fund that. Then forget about the amount of cash and low lo that this company has. This, in my opinion, is a strategic way of using its finances, right? It's making sure that the leaders in the AI market are being boosted because it's a smooth ride for them to get to these new models, to get these new markets, to get to this new technology. It's going to be a smooth ride for NVIDIA. And NVIDIA has plenty of free cash flow, as we can see here, to cover it. I'll also talk a little bit of my overall thoughts if this is an AI bubble or if this is a flywheel effect in a bit. Um, but there's three ways around it that I will discuss. Now, there is a full interview on CNBC and the market just closed. Just, I'm just curious to see what NVIDIA closed it. Closed at $183.61. Now, there is a full 20-minute interview about this. And I definitely would recommend people watch it. But there's something within the 10-minute mark, 8-minute mark, 8-minute mark, eight mark, eight mark and 31 seconds that really stood out to me. This is additive. This project, 10 gigawatts of AI infrastructure is additive to everything that has been announced and contracted. Remember, they've contracted huge amounts of capacity through Azure, through OCI, through CoreWeave. Mm. And all of that is powered by NVIDIA, and we're really delighted working with all of these partners. And that's going to continue to grow. This is additive incremental on top of that, which just kind of puts it in perspective, the scale of AI computing that's needed for the world. So yeah, I thought that was insane. Everything here is additive. And he actually goes on to say that the amount of GPUs that is just on this one project, on this one project, is more GPUs than the company is going to sell this year. So it just showcases the landscape of this AI ecosystem. And he also believes this is not the first 10 gigawatt project that we're going to see. There's going to be multiple 10 gigawatt projects that this world is seeing. And it's more than likely going to be powered by NVIDIA. So again, this is just obvious. Jensen, CEO of the company, is going to see this immense growth in AI. I don't want to take all these numbers to true value. But the one thing that I do want to take to value is that the demand for AI compute continues to grow. And these AI leaders, again, check out the interview. They talk about how, yes, most users right now are using it for GPT and kind of chatbot solutions. But within the world, this is changing pretty quickly as the types of technology that's being made with AI is not even in the consumer space anymore. It's kind of hitting like the researchers, new products, new technology, and that alone will start kind of a huge new market demand for AI solutions. So again, I just, at first, I thought this was non-additive. I thought it was just a way to continue to fuel the fire, but this is just a second fire being built somewhere else that's going to continue to help heat up this AI market. Now, I want to talk a little bit about some of the companies and again, later on, share some of my overall thoughts, but Micron Technology, right? Micron Technology was up about 1.1% on day. It was actually a little bit higher earlier. No matter who ends up winning in this AI market, more AI chips mean more HBM, which means that there is the market potential for Micron Technology and some of these other players to continue to do well. Now, we do have CoreWeave, which was also up. CoreWeave is one of my favorite stocks. This is one that I'm really excited to have gone really, really big under the $100 price point of 6.7%. AI infrastructure needs are going to continue to grow, and CoreWeave is definitely going to benefit that being a preferred partner of NVIDIA. Now, Oracle. Oracle gonna, it was up about 6.3% on the day. I think it helps suggests that the market demand is so high that this RPO that Oracle has from OpenAI is not necessarily the craziest thing, right? It kind of gives some more solidification. Jensen, a big trillion dollar company, comes out and says, look, this is all additive to that. That's how crazy the AI compute space is. 
So the market was loving it, especially since obviously OpenAI and Oracle have some great partnerships right now. Now, Oracle, I haven't covered it yet, but it does seem like Oracle had a bit of a shakeup in the CEO, uh, the current CEO departure, and they're breaking it into two CEOs. The two CEOs are, one is focusing more on AI infrastructure and joined from AWS, and is going to continue to build Oracle Cloud's infrastructure. And the other one is a big player in in applications it's going to focus more on AI solutions and their AI agents. So pretty interesting from Oracle there, something maybe we might cover in another episode. Now, another company that we've been discussing a lot in this channel, Solaris Energy, up 6.5% the past five days is up about 24%. This is one of the energy, few energy plays, the, I think maybe the only energy play that I truly have in my portfolio. And it's obviously any company in the energy space right now will be benefiting any company within kind of the cloud space, be it your Neo clouds, like your Core Weave, your Iron, your Nebius are benefiting today due to the overall excitement happening in the industry. Now there's a stock that was kind of reddish today, Broadcom, right? Broadcom was down roughly 1.6%. The main reason here is the market is a little bit fearful that we heard Broadcom had a nice order with OpenAI. But if NVIDIA, if, if NVIDIA and OpenAI are going to be working really well on chips and maybe optimizing it, does this create a little bit more friction between that Broadcom and OpenAI partnership? I don't think so, but the market is kind of fearing a little bit more. Now, I, I, I'm, I'm more of an NVIDIA bull, but I wouldn't say this is necessarily bearish for Broadcom just yet. I think we would have to look at further news, but it does create a yellow flag. Right, because if NVIDIA just innovates so quickly, obviously they could say, OpenAI could go to Broadcom and say, thank you for the engineering fees. Thank you for helping us design a chip, but there's no reason for us to waste more money and build it out. We're just going to continue to go with NVIDIA. Now with AMT, I was a little bit shocked that it was up on the news, right? We do know that that, part, that partnership with AMT and OpenAI, if, or if Broadcom was down, I actually was expecting AMT to be down as well. I wonder if the market is just excited that one, it's not an exclusive deal with NVIDIA, right? It, OpenAI and NVIDIA are not exclusive, are not an exclusive thing. But this one was up 1.5% on the day. Just, I want to say from the overall excitement happening in this industry. Now, check out my X account. I did kind of share some of my thoughts and if you're ever curious, but what am I thinking? So first, I think NVIDIA here is the clear winner. It's using its massive free cash flow, like I mentioned, 72 billion in the last 12 months to bankroll OpenAI's compute infrastructure, which directly boost NVIDIA GPUs. The other thing that I want to say is NVIDIA is getting an investment equity in OpenAI. So if OpenAI becomes successful, NVIDIA will benefit from that investment. This, in my opinion, is a smart way of cash. It's almost a, a, a smart way to use cash. First thing is it's using cash because it knows that company is going to use that cash to buy back. So it's just circling back. But it's not necessarily only circling back. For NVIDIA, it's building another asset of equity. And that equity has the valuations to be able to go up. So in theory, NVIDIA will make a better, better balance sheet. Now, it is also important to remember that OpenAI leases rather than builds data center outright. It's avoiding that massive capex. Renting out GPUs from companies like Oracle and Core Weave have lower upfront costs. So a $10 billion per gigawatt can actually help them go a long way with a year or, or so in forms of AI compute. Now, for this ecosystem, is this an AI bubble? I think there's three ways to play out. First, OpenAI's revenue growth accelerates at rapid levels. The AI market is real. If those two things play out, then this is a no-brainer for NVIDIA. No bubble, everything is good. There's a second scenario. If OpenAI screws up AI, but AI giant, but AI is still a massive, massive technology, an other AI giant is going to come and utilize that infrastructure. So maybe bad news for OpenAI, maybe bad news to some of OpenAI's partners, but overall bullish for NVIDIA as that infrastructure is still going to be used. And it's still bullish for the overall AI ecosystem. Now, the only way I think this is a bad bet for NVIDIA is if AI tech ultimately under delivers, then everyone involved is a loser. 
mainly focusing here on NVIDIA and obviously the companies that I follow. There might be a, a bubble in certain stocks. I don't cover them. I haven't covered many right now. The ones I cover, I'm still pretty excited about, obviously, maybe a little bit biased, but it's the three scenarios. AI is real, open AI succeeds, everybody wins. AI is real, open AI doesn't succeed, some other AI company is gonna succeed, and most of the ecosystem is still good. The worst news, and the one where this would be money filing back in and kind of this crazy flywheel that didn't make sense is if AI market under delivers in forms of technology. And from what I'm seeing right now, I don't think that's the case. So I'm pretty excited about this news. I do think this is a great way for NVIDIA to use its free cash flow, to use its cash balance sheet. It's the best way to make sure the AI ecosystem continues to drive, right? I'm not, obviously buybacks are cool, dividends are cool, but this is something that will make sure that strong growth will continue. This is what continues to innovate the next leg of the race. Um, in forms of players, I mentioned a lot of the companies I'm very bullish on. I'm still very bullish in the AI ecosystem. I continue to hold Core Reef and a lot of those big players, and I'm not going to sell anytime soon. But I am going to say the market has been pretty hyped lately. A pullback is not unheard of, and it's not something I think it's impossible. So be prepared for a pullback. Markets don't always go up. AI market is not always going to go up. I think the long-term trend is going to look nice, but in the short term, there's going to be some volatility craziness. Take care, have a good day, and see you all next time.